Hello, good morning everybody. Ocholio Kutepa is my name. I'm excited to be talking to you again this morning. So this morning I'm just going to be talking about long distance relationships and by extension long distance marriages. Let me start by saying that long distance relationships can actually exist uh, from the beginning but long distance marriages should not ordinarily uh, be the case from the beginning except something happens and you really don't have an option um, as to how to go about that. So uh, I'm going to say very quickly, like I always say, that God did not design marriage to be by correspondence. It's not God's will for any marriage to be by correspondence. He made a couple to live together. But having said that, let me just um, lump this together. This is going to be relevant to single people in long distance relationships and married people who find themselves in some form of distance. Let me quickly say this, that that relationship is a relationship that has special needs. All right, that's not a relationship that is like every other relationship where the people uh, can see themselves as soon as they need to see themselves or can meet up and have face-to-face uh, -face conversations when they need to have face-to-face -face conversation. Now, proximity is a very big thing. Proximity is, um, proximity is something you can deal with just by, uh, you know, just being there. Proximity is something you deal with deliberately, decisively, and that you have to be smart about, you know, to deal with. If not, you're just going to make a mess of what you have. And let me also say this, that until you begin to put effort to this whole process, relationship is just going to be difficult. All right. So proximity is the first problem you have. But here's the deal. Proximity, physical proximity doesn't have to become emotional proximity. So what you're trying to do here is you're trying to come to the point where you are able to manage the emotion to stay closer than the distance you experience physically. All right. And this is going to be a very humble process. For a lot of people, you know, this is where we begin to claim more rights than the responsibilities we want to take. And that's a problem. Both of you need to become responsible for communication, for example, as a matter of decision, like I am decisive about this, all right? I must take responsibility for this. And one of the things that happen when you begin to take responsibility is that you have less excuses, notwithstanding that the excuses may exist, all right? You have less excuses, notwithstanding that the excuses may exist. For instance, the nature of work, you know, how tired you come back from work, how stressed you are with what you're doing, you know, the engagements you're involved in. See, you begin to make more effort to be in touch than the number of excuses you are ready to give while you cannot be in touch. That's just one example that, that I have to give here. All right, number two point I'm going to make, which should have been number one, by the way, is if you want your partner to always be understanding, then you're not regarding their emotion. You know, so people come to the point where before you know it, uh, then that floor of my partner should understand, my partner should understand, my partner should understand. Now, don't forget you are dealing with an emotional disposition. All right, so that while your partner may want to extend some understanding, there's just how far they will be understanding of your lack of tact, your lack of communication, and your lack of effort towards them. Because effort actually turns on the button that says, you know what, this person loves me, this person wants to be with me, this person wants to make effort at me. All right, so you come to the point where people get tired of making effort and begin to expect their partner to just understand. I know you are working, but I'm not just going to understand because emotions are not logical. Emotions can think just the way people expect, uh, you know, the brain to think. The emotions feel, the emotions expect, the emotions want things to happen. All right, so don't overstretch their understanding even where they are giving you understanding because man is a relationship being and that's exactly why you even got into the relationship in the first place you didn't get into the relationship to just have a hanging status you got into the relationship because you wanted to relate so relate because you are there to relate all right so it's so important it's so important to do that if not you will not be bridging the emotional gap because what you want to deal with is the emotional gap number three assure i mean there's no limit to the level of assurance you need to give when the distance is there now there are different dimensions of this assurance i mean you know it's, it's not just okay let me jokingly say it's not just assurance it's not the assurance that is assuring here and assuring there okay i'm talking about assurance that you know is is deepened with time with commitment with words with action 
All right, so you cannot overassure across the distance, so you keep assuring. And I'm going to give you specific examples of why I'm saying what I'm saying. All right, so you have assurance of loyalty, like I'm still with you. You have assurance of faithfulness, like I'm doing my best, you know, to make sure that I keep my responsibilities to be faithful to you, whether I'm single or my people. All right, you have the assurance of their heart. You know, that's a totally different ball game. All right, where you convince a person that you still with them, you still want them you're still going ahead with them see if you don't do this the relationship begins to fall below the minimum standard required of people who claim to be in relationship so it becomes so important to always assure you cannot over assure when it comes to relationship especially relationship that is from a distance you cannot over assure so the effort must, must exist all right let me add some more layers before i'm done with this video as a couple going through a distance relationship, one of the things you must also have is agreed routines that you're ready to bind yourselves to. You know, some people are dating across distance and they don't even realize that routine is the secret of champions. So you must have agreed routines. What are the routines you want to keep? All right, I'll give you specific examples. You know, how often do you want to make calls? I'm not talking about the calls that come out of feelings. I'm talking about the calls that come out of is fixed. Like, do we speak every night before we go to bed? Do we speak in the morning? Or, you know, and this is going to have regard for your respective schedule. Look at the nature of work you do. Look at the nature of work they do. You know, at what times can we consistently, for example, speak? All right, do we have times or do we have any plan to read books together, have conversations around them and review them? All right, do we have times, you know, that we want to pray and fast together about our life and our destiny and our marriage or the marriage we want to have? You know, see, this is why people get bored with themselves because they are not enough routine to keep them involved with each other. So, you know, they, they fall into this place where they make calls and it is sweet nothings and you say this, I say that, and before you know it, we're getting tired of each other because we don't even exactly know what we're doing with each other. All right, so it becomes important to be in that place where you're able to manage uh, to have routines that you can keep together. I mean, very specific routines that are helpful, that keeps you engaged. Because what happens here is you have the capacity, you know, to now deploy something with each other without necessarily cracking your mind all the time because you have this routine set out. All right, the other thing I would say, uh, in addition to all I have said, is you must learn to pick on your challenging task together. You know, sometimes what happens is we are divorced from their immediate pressure, so they find it difficult to connect with us. So if you learn to take on projects together or learn to get each other involved in the project, and now when I say involved in the project, it means that you have to also be interested to go beyond seeking rights and having responsibilities towards them. It means you are going to stop complaining if they are taking on a difficult project, if they are researching. You may want to look up a few things and just so that you're able to sustain a conversation around their area of pressure all right if they are going through financial pressure whatever pressure it is that both of you experience in your individual lives you know it's important to be to be in the place where you are able to have conversations around your respective pressure because until you are able to do that they are not going to find you an integral part of their life so you have people facing diverse pressures who don't even bring each other into the pressures that they face that's a problem on its own because they are not going to be able to relate to your pain and anybody whose pain you cannot relate with you are not relating with them properly or intimately all right so it's so important and i'm going to say this also now i'll say this with a note of caution for the singles but lavishly for the married all right make as much physical contact as possible now i'm not talking about nudes all right and i'm going to tell you why i'm not talking about nudes even for the married see it's important not to you know lead yourselves into temptation for the single number one so that you don't begin to sext and you know uh, have phone sex and all of that you know for the marriage so that you don't trigger emotions before it is time and what is time you don't trigger emotions that you are not ready to satisfy all right so it, it's very important you know uh, so sometimes people ask the question like can i please my partner over the phone can i do this over the phone see it's very tricky very tricky very tricky i mean you're not seeing this person even as a married for another one year or another six months or not three months are you sure you are not going to trigger them and put them into temptation that makes you know temptation hard to take 
strength. All right, so it's so important. Be sure of your strength levels in terms of your capacity to, you know, to withstand the temptations that can follow uh, an activated desire. So be careful about that. But why do I mean physical contact? It's so important to always make, you know, uh, vi visual contact as much as possible. So you may want to even schedule into your plans to call each other times that it's convenient to have video calls. I mean, voice is good. I mean, and these are calls that does not necessarily need an agenda on the table. I mean, you are relating and you are dating for God's sake. You want to make sure that you both are able to just sit like partners that you are. Because if you were under the same roof as a married couple in the same city, well, as people dating and you just met up in a garden, for example, I mean, the, 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 you don't need to have an agenda on the table. You don't need to have an agenda on the table. Thank God for the generation where you can make WhatsApp video calls, you can make Instagram video calls, you can make video calls across all manner of platforms, Zoom. I mean, what are you talking about? So can we just sit? I mean, it can go as far as setting up the camera and while you are doing stuff, while you're cooking, while you're washing, you know, while you're doing stuff, even while you're reading. I mean, we used to go and read those days in school, in class together. You know, those reading that you're just in half the time. You know, you're just connecting, basically. See, the summary of all I've been saying is you must kill the distance. If you don't kill the distance, the distance is going to kill your relationship. I'm going to say that very strongly again. If you don't kill the distance, the distance is going to kill your relationship. But that's not what you want, all right? Then, finally, 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 all right. Every relationship that does not have a terminal date for the distance will be terminated before you know it. See, there's a frustration that comes with, you know, having no end in view for distance. All right. So if you're single and you're dating, you want to be sure that you're having conversation around when you're going to make whatever travel, whatever plans you have and be concrete about them. When do you want to even marry this person? How long do you want to keep this person in this loop of things? How long do you want to make all the effort that I just mentioned? It's so important. If you're married, see, God did not design marriage to be by correspondence for anybody. So if you're married, what is the plan? When are you going to see? How are you going to see? How are you going to do this? It's so important because until you do that, you, you, you create a situation where, you know, the heart becomes weary because the Bible even says that hope deferred makes the heart sick. So the person is expecting one year, two years, it becomes three years, it becomes four years. It's so frustrating. All right. Then don't even forget that the married, you have sexual needs, real sexual needs. I mean, legitimate sexual needs that you need to meet. All right. So I'm just going to go back to the last point I made before I came in to this if you don't deal with the distance the distance is going to deal with your relationship or your marriage so what should you do have a concrete plan please never sweep it under the table and take it for granted that distance is normal even in marriage distance is not normal and you must make more effort than the people who do not have distance because until you kill the proximity and break the distance the distance is going to break your relationship all right. I really hope that this was a blessing. Until I come your way again, my name. God bless you.